Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to another episode of CX Riot Radio, where we talk about customer experience and stuff, all in a hyper-caffeinated state. Still in a hyper-caffeinated state. Before we begin today's episode, today's rant, I have a small favor to ask. If you could find it in your heart to like, subscribe, review, comment, and share the show so we can make the show grow, I'd be much obliged. You know I've done it for a lot of you with your own shows, with your own things. Let's pay it forward a little bit. Let's do it. I'm just kidding. You don't have to. But it would be nice. So, I'm going to keep today's uh, show light and tight. Mostly because I want to leave the studio. And I have stuff to do. And, if we're being a little honest here, I have to pee. I don't know why I started recording before I took care of that, but I didn't. And here we are. So, if I talk a little fast, if I seem a little distracted that's why so again it is what it is today we're going to be talking about something that i talk about sometimes and that is modernizing the customer experience in the trades falling off bridges over here all right so There's a running joke in the trades, and by trades I mean like plumbing, HVAC, um, construction, all that jazz, right? There's a running joke that it is uh, at least 10 to 15 years behind when it comes to tech, and that is pretty much true. There are some outliers, that there are some companies that utilize the newest tech, but that's usually one or two people within the organization who have adopted it and then kind of spread it around. It's not it's not universal, right? So, I mean, there's uh, plumbing companies out there that go through like reams of paper a day in some of their departments, right? And then there's other ones that are completely digital and, uh, you know, they don't use paper at all unless they're giving it to that one department. It's okay. I still like you. But let's talk about technology and changing consumer behavior, right? So both tech and that changing consumer behavior have created a shift in what customers want. Customers customers want a lot of things now, right? The customer expectations are rising. We, as business leaders, need to jump into this and elevate the customer experience like never before it's just something we have to do we have to meet the customers where they're at and we have to be ready for the next wave of uh, tech improvements so five years ago maybe a handshake and a promise might have cut it but today that's ancient history Customers demand more. They demand convenience, transparency, personalization, and a real connection that goes beyond just getting the job done. First up, convenience and accessibility. Your customers want to schedule their plumbing or HVAC service as easily as they can order a pizza. When was the last time you picked up the phone to order food. I don't mean using an app here, all right? I mean actually calling a restaurant. And uh, yeah, if you're like me, and I know I am, it's been a while. In fact, it's been probably closer to a decade and a half since I've done that. Ever since they launched the website or the mobile app ordering of pizza, I've been using that for a couple of reasons. One, is easier. I don't have to call. 
to, they can't misinterpret what I say or mishear it. If I say pineapple, they're not going to put pepperoncinis, right? Or vice versa. It is what it is. So, why do so many plumbing and HVAC companies only offer voice for their customers? That's crazy. Or, you know, if they're cutting edge, they might have a form fill on their website. Cool. Neato Torpedo. Awesome. Great. Grand. Awesome sauce. Online booking, mobile apps, real-time updates. These things are now the baseline. It's the minimum of what you should have. If you're not offering those, you're falling behind. And I am of the opinion that there are th that you should give the customers at least three options of how to do business with you initially, right? Voice, get a human on the line. Two, chat, right? And that can be either like a live web chat or a SMS. And honestly, at this point, I don't care if it's a, you know, a human being or a hu or a uh, chatbot being assisted by a human, whatever, right? Who cares? As long as it's an option. And the third one is like a self-serve. You can book directly into the system, select your own time, good to go type thing. So those three at the very least. I think the app is amazing especially if you can tie it in and have things on that app like online scheduling and online bill pay and being able to track where your service technician is kind of like an uber type deal where you can see them coming on the map to your house i think that would be amazing so and i would definitely use that if i wasn't so diy and uh a little technical handy so anything big yeah I'd, I'd use that so so um things that you should do right now if you can and if you don't already have these is online booking implement an online booking system on your website make it seamless make it part of the website um schedule engine does this very well so uh, i think uh I don't think I know. Schedule Engine got bought out by Service Titan or they merged with Service Titan. Something happened between them and Service Titan. And now Schedule Engine is being turned into Schedule Pro or Scheduling Pro. One of those. All I know is that it's going to be the same thing and the price is going up. So, but it's still a very, very, very good tool. And you should look into getting something like that or that. Okay. Um, if you can, get a mobile app with those things I just mentioned, right? That's pretty cool. So, real-time updates. Ensure your system provides real-time notifications to customers, like a dispatch notification, right? Hey, so-and-so is coming to your house right now. Oh, they've arrived. Look at that. All right. And I've already mentioned have at least three options for booking an appointment voice chat or sms and a self-serve scheduling option now if you want to have one of those cool voice ai things on there here's a uh, caveat all right so because people aren't really into talking to robots yet have it as a choice do you want to speak to a human do you want to speak to our artificial intelligence assistant jerry or whatever right or have it like have it instead of uh, I know a lot of uh, trades companies will have an answering service if uh, their if their customers are on hold too much like let's say uh, all the uh, company CSRs are busy or they all decided to go to the bathroom or something or you know for some reason they all got off the floor to go to a meeting because nobody thought maybe someone should man the phones I, I don't know I guess it could happen um, and uh, normally that's when the call would go over to an answering service. These answering services are really hit or miss. There's some good ones. There's some really bad ones. It is what it is. Uh, but have the AI voice bot connected to the API for your CRM so they can, uh, you know, book right into the system through it. 
have that as a fallback option instead of going over to an answering service. And there's uh, there's some options out there. Um, yeah, just look or ask on LinkedIn. You'll be spammed for weeks. So, yep. So next is transparency, right? That's what we're going to talk about next. Still have to pee. The days of vague estimates and hidden fees are over. Today's consumers want detailed information about pricing, timelines, and the scope of work. They want to know what they're paying for and why. It's all about trust. Be upfront, be clear, and watch your customer loyalty, the c loy soar. And so, if you can, provide itemized estimates, right? Have transparent pricing. Commute communicate clearly about timelines and any potential changes in scope now some of that you legally have to provide right to a certain extent depending on your state so do that and you'll be good just if you're not there pretend you're in california follow those laws okay uh then there's uh the next step is personalization right are there any one size fits all solutions not anymore, bucko. Customers want their unique needs addressed with tailored services. Use data to understand your customers, anticipate their needs, and deliver solutions that feel custom made. Yeah. So, use your CR CRM system to gather and analyze customer data. Huh. Personalized recommendations offer personalized recommendations based on past services and preferences. Once your uh, customer database gets to a certain number, there is so much information that you can glean from there. It's amazing. And then train. Train your staff to recognize and respond to individual customer needs. You can utilize Prism. Prism, not Prison. Prism and other customer segmentation tools to define your customer base and train off of the findings on that. So Prism is pretty cool. Like you have the gray power, the young Digerati, and other segments that you can tailor your marketing and your customer service to. So uh, digital capabilities are crucial. Strong online presence is non-negotiable. Uh, user-friendly websites, seamless online booking systems, which we've already talked about, and active social media channels. These are your digital storefronts. Make them inviting, easy to navigate, and reflective of your brand's professionalism and expertise, and depending on the social media platform, have some fun with it. All right. So, have a professional website. Invest in a professional, easy-to-navigate website. Yeah, it's uh, 2024. It is current year. Uh, you should be doing this anyway. Um, ensure your site is mobile-friendly, of course, because not many people anymore are sitting on a desktop unless they're playing a video game or they're at work. So, And if they're at work and they don't work at a plumbing company, or an HVAC company, they're probably sneakily checking on their phone. So make your website mobile friendly. There you go. Uh, and then social media, maintain active social media profiles to engage with customers and showcase your work. Throw some memes up there. It's fine. Just do it. So uh, professionalism and expertise, of course. Uh, customers expect your technicians to be not just competent but be the best let's face it these things are expensive act like they are they want skilled knowledgeable professionals who are up to date with industry best practices continuous training and education are essential and if you're not doing that what are you doing you should have a training center or a training program and it should be uh uh, if you can't afford to do it weekly, do it monthly. And if you can't do it monthly, do it quarterly with monthly reminders. Okay. So, um, yeah. And then sustainability. You know, people actually give a damn about the environment. Supposedly. I mean, 
There are some cities around me that only have paper straws. You know how awful paper straws are as a consumer? Especially if you get something like a smoothie. I don't... You can't finish the smoothie before the straw finishes itself. I, I don't know. And then you have, like, paper slurry in your smoothie. It's it's ridiculous. It's stupid. I would sacrifice a turtle to have a plastic straw. I don't know. That's me. So, uh, but anyway, uh, they want uh, today's consumers care about the environment. They want to know that companies they do business with are responsible stewards of the planet. At least that's what they say. All the trash on the ground makes me question that. And all the discarded masks that we saw, yeah, it's it's fine. Um, but you know, if they're playing lip service to it and they want to impress their neighbors and their friends cool so um you can implement uh, eco-friendly practices offer sustainable solutions and make this a core part of your brand identity put the word green in your company right do that and then people might get a little bit confused and call in thinking you're like a dispensary or something but you know you can just give them the address of a dispensary or you can be both i don't care none of my business um, so eco-friendly practices, adopt eco-friendly practices such as recycling and using sustainable materials, cool, um, offer green solutions like energy efficient HVAC systems or water saving plumbing fixtures like, you know, tankless water heaters, things like that, um, promote your commitment to sustainability in your marketing and customer communications. Some people love that. So. Uh, to meet these evolving expectations, embrace change, invest in technology, and adopt a customer-centric approach. Of course, that's what we're all about here, right? Uh, gather and analyze customer feedback relentlessly. Use it to refine your processes, improve your services, and show your customers that, your vo that their voices are heard. I've done plenty of episodes about that. I'm not going to dig that much into it. Customer feedback, if you do it right and you actually do stuff with it, is a gold mine there's nothing better there's you can't find anything better to improve your company with than customer feedback yeah so do those surveys have them non-invasive don't force them and don't say things like uh give us a 10 or don't give us anything at all that kind of thing right um and you want as many as possible, so, um, and you want them as accurate and as honest as possible, so, and, and I know that's a challenge, um, but the best way to get five-star reviews and positive surveys is getting five-star service and positive interactions, so, I don't know, do that, and they'll come in, I don't know. Um, then use that feedback to identify areas of improvement and implement changes. And then, you know, communicate to your customers how their feedback has led to improvement in your services. I think I talked about this last week or the week before. I don't know. But it's important and it needs to be repeated. Yeah. So the future of the trades is bright, but it demands adaptation. We can no longer be 10, 15 years in the past when it comes to technology. We need to be on the forefront. I just made a joke on the Service Titan page that I thought they were lacking. I thought they were slow in implementing automation and uh, AI. They're not slow compared to the rest of the trades industry. Yeah. So, it is what it is. Um, those who embrace these changes, who innovate... And prioritize the customer experience with these things will thrive they won't just survive they'll thrive and that is pretty cool so let's do that let's jump into modern day into current year and maybe be a little bit maybe a couple months ahead of everybody else so yeah yeah, so uh, here's a reminder to uh, buy my book, 
the blue collar call center and if you have that one then buy the blue collar call center field manual it's about rebuttals hundreds of rebuttals in there at least at least a couple hundred maybe 150 I don't know and also the other one that I have the business fable that I keep forgetting the name of which is bad because I wrote it but steel and soul a, cu a journey of customer centric enlightenment they're on Amazon they're cheap yeah a new one's coming out soon so I'll keep you posted on that may all your dreams be beautiful and may you sleep soundly tonight now go drink some coffee I guess I don't know bye I'm gonna go pee